Okay, so looking at these examples, some of the hard thing that we're going to have to figure out is that we don't necessarily know a shortcut command yet, that is, to create these arcs. But there is an arc command that we're going to use. In this case, I'm going to show you how to do both of them when it comes to the bottom. But on the top method, I'm going to show you the benefit of using polylines. The first things that we're going to have to try to figure out is how long is this line and this line. If we know the radius of this arc, we can subtract it from the overall length of 1, and that will give me the length of this line. Likewise for the top, if I know the overall length of this line, and if I subtract the radius, which is here, from that, that should give me the length of that line. So that's what I'm going to use to create this. And you're going to see with the polyline command that creating the arc will be done for us relatively easy. Here at the bottom, I'll create this one using the polyline command. And I'll also create it using just regular lines and show you how the arc command will work. Alright, so let's go ahead and switch over to AutoCAD and see if we can get this done. Okay, so we want to create the top one, and I'm going to create this in a counterclockwise rotation, and that way it'll create the arcs for me. And I'll show you the significance of that when I create example number two, using just the regular line methods. Okay, so I'll use polyline. I'll click my start point, And once again, I can choose which one of these methods I want to have turned on. So you can either use ortho, or you can use the polar tracking method. I'll just stick with ortho since it's going to be a lot simpler on here. I'll point down. And remember I told you to do that subtraction. So 1 minus whatever that radius was. In this case will leave me with 0.75. I'll zoom into that shape. I'll go this direction, a distance of 2. Let's go up a distance of 0.5. Let's go in to the left here, 0.75. Let's go up, 0.5. And then I'll come back this direction, and I have to do that same subtraction again. So 1.25 minus the radius. In this case, that line should be 1. Now if I zoom into this, and you can see I need to have an arc that connects that. Well, in the polyline command, there is an arc feature located here on my command line. So I'll select the word arc. And then I'll select the word next to it, which is close. And once you select close, you're going to see that it will complete that arc for us. And it will close our shape and it will kick us out of the polyline command. Next, let's go ahead and locate our circle. And that circle has a diameter. So I'll choose circle, center diameter. Now, my last point that AutoCAD has is somewhere, I guess, in this region. But to make things easier, I'll hold down the shift button and right click. You can let go of the shift button, choose the word from, select this endpoint. Remember when you use the from OSNAP command, you have to type in the add symbol and that's going to be shift and the number two button. Now I'll type in my coordinates. The X coordinate is first so I want to go 0.5 or to the right a distance of 0.5 comma and then I want to go up a distance of 0.5 so that's going to also be positive 0.5. Once I put those two coordinates in and hit enter it's going to ask me for the diameter 0.38. Okay, let's do the bottom shape. And I'm going to use the polyline command to show you how to do the outside shell of this one. And then I'll do it with regular lines, and then we'll go ahead and put the circles on the inside. So let's start with a polyline. I'll click somewhere here below. 
I have my ortho on still, so I'm going to drag this direction a distance of 6. Enter. Next, I'll choose the word arc. Then I'm going to go straight up. And remember that this is the diameter, and on our drawing, it's giving us a radius. So what I want you to notice is that this dimension is a radius. Well, the distance from this point is where we are to this point has to be twice that distance. So that is a diameter going across or the number 2. So we have to double the radius to get across. So once you see you have that line going straight up away from it, I'm going to type in 2, enter. Now I need to switch back to line. So I'll select the word line. I'll go this direction, a distance of 6. And then I'll go back to the word arc. And then I'll choose the word close. If I chose to do that method by using regular lines, I can. So I'll start with a line. I'll go a distance of 6. I'll go up a distance of 2. Back to the left a distance of 6. And then use close to complete. At the end of these, I can go ahead and specify arcs. Now when using arcs, you have to determine which one you want to use based on the information that you have. A lot of these are similar to each other. And some of them are exactly the same. They're just, they just move the words around in the order of which you're going to select to select your arc or create your arc. So for example, if I want to use start, center, end, I know where I want my arc to start from. I know where the center is and I know where the end is. So this one will be a good option to use. I do know the start, end, and I know what direction I want to go. This one is also an acceptable option. And you can see the center start in is exactly like this one, except you're specifying the center first, then the start, and then the end. So I'm just going to use the start inner, sorry, start center in option first. Select that. The start of my arc, and remember you have to pick these points in order to create your arc in a counterclockwise rotation, meaning that I want my arc to flow and go around this direction. So therefore, I'll start here. Now it's asking me, specify my center point, which is this midpoint here. And then the end point is going to be located here. I can delete this line. And then let's do it on the other end. But this time, I'll intentionally create it and make a mistake. So I'll go to arc, start, center, end. And if I chose this endpoint first, this midpoint, and then this center, you will see that it will create your arc going the other direction. So I can click on this endpoint. Now, if you accidentally make that mistake and you see that preview is coming, you can look on your command line and you can see I can hold down the control button and it will switch the direction of my arc. So before you click on this endpoint and you see that it's going the wrong direction, hold down the control button. And you can see I can move my mouse up just a little bit. Now when I come back to that endpoint, do a left click on that endpoint and you can see it will correct your arc. But the easiest way to do that is you remember in the counterclockwise rotation, you will create those arcs going the right direction. Let's go ahead and delete this line as well. And let's put in our circles. So I'll go ahead and specify my first circle, which is circle, center, diameter. I'm going to touch this arc to get my center point. I'll click here. And then I'll type in the diameter, which is 1. Next, I want to create another circle from this one. So I'll go back to the circle, start, center, diameter. Sorry, the circle center diameter. I want you to touch. Do not click on this endpoint. And what I want you to do now is come away from your circle as quick as you can. 
Also, try to stay away from the quadrant that's in the middle. So you can see that when I move my cursor here to the outside, I'm kind of coming out at it diagonally, and then I'll come up. Once you get the tracking, you can type in the distance that you want, which is 1.5. Enter. And then it's the same size circle as my last one, so I'll hit the Enter button. I'll do that again, so I'll just hit enter. That'll take me back to the last command, which is the circle command. I'm going to go ahead and locate the center of this. Do not click on it. Touch it. Come to the outside as quickly as you can. Come up and get the green tracking lines. Type in 1.5. Enter. And it's the same size circle as my last one, so I'm just going to hit the enter button one more time. And we're going to do this two more times. So I'll go back to the circle command. I'm just selecting the enter button on my keyboard because it's going to take me back to the last command. I'm going to touch this center. I'm going to come out diagonally. And then I'll just come up to where I get the green tracking lines. Type in 1.5. Enter. Same size circle. Use the enter button. Now if you're not getting those trackings to come up is controlled by your function key 11 and that's your osnap tracking so if you're not getting the green tracking lines that's probably the the issue but if you're getting them leave the osnap tracking button alone okay so i'll use the circle command one more time i'm just hitting the enter button to take me back to circle i'll touch this center do not click Come out kind of diagonally to stay away from those quadrants. Come up. I got the green tracking. Type in 1.5. Enter. It's the same size circle as my last one, so I can just hit the Enter button. If you want a little bit more practice, we can do it on this one as well. So I'll use Circle. Center Diameter. This time, I'm just going to locate the center. Click it and type in the diameter, which is 1. I'll hit the Enter button. I'll use my other one, or I'll put a, place another circle at this center. It's the same size circle as my last one, so Enter. And then I can copy from those like I did before. So I can use a circle, center, diameter. Touch the center. Come out diagonally, and I'll just keep tracking from it. Once I get my green tracking lines, do not click. Just type in 1.5, enter. Same size circle, so I'll just hit the enter button. Use the enter button again. And all I'm going to do is just track, come up, place, 1.5, enter, and then enter. Enter again to take me back to the circle command. Touch the center. Track, come up and place it. Type in 1.5, enter. I'll take the enter, enter for the last same size circle as I created before. So now you can see I showed you two different options of how to create this. The polar, sorry not the polar, the polyline option has some really useful benefits of creating arcs. And it can keep your shape all at once, so you will get some geometric properties with this. For example, you can locate the geometric center of this one if you wanted to place a circle or something else in the middle. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this and understand it fully.